So I'm a professor here at San Jose State. Uh, my background is in civil engineering. I'm an earthquake engineer. Growing up, what was your family life like? Kind of, did that affect your choices at all? We had a big earthquake in Los Angeles, which is where I grew up, and I was shaken out of my bed. And we had school canceled for a couple of days because the school was damaged, and that got me very excited about earthquakes. And so when I went to college, I got interested in engineering. Mm -hmm. And then I went to graduate school and I did my PhD in earthquake engineering. So it's something that I've been sort of passionate about since I was about your age. Who, was there anyone who inspired you or supported you a lot along the way? My mechanics professor, and he had gone down to Guatemala. There had been an earthquake down there, and he had gone down there to look at the damage after the earthquake. And it was a, a horrific earthquake. There was so much damage, so many people died. And he came back and he showed slides to our class of all the collapsed buildings and he was almost crying and he said, this doesn't have to happen. We can, we can build buildings that don't collapse. We have the technology so that people don't have to die in earthquakes. And right then and there I said, I want to do that because I can help people and make their lives better. So he was a true inspiration for me. Which of your career accomplishments are you proudest of? It was a research project where I was working with a large team of engineers and the goal was to identify older um, concrete buildings that, are, that are, have a high chance of collapse in a future earthquake. I'm really proud of that because it was a research project but it led to the, whole, the city of Los Angeles changing their, their building code and I just think that's a very exciting um, contribution. One of the important things in buildings is that every building behaves differently in an earthquake. Which of these buildings, these each represent, this is a tall building and this mm -hmm. is a short building. Which of these buildings do you think is going to move more when I shake it, when I shake the ground? Tall one. So if I do this, notice oh. that the, the, tall, the tall one isn't moving at all, but the, the mm -hmm. short one's moving a lot. But if I move this very slowly, the tall one moves a lot and the short mm -hmm. one doesn't move at all. So one of the things we have to worry about in earthquake engineering is how to design our buildings so that when there's an earthquake they don't move too much and every earthquake has slightly different characteristics. So some will excite the tall buildings and some will excite the short buildings. So this is one of the demonstrations. And then what we have here is um, a small shake table so we allow them to design a tower and then we uh, excite the tower with an earthquake and then this isn't actually a very good building. You can see mm -hmm. it's moving a lot and it's twisting and everything. So I can also change the frequency. I can make it slower. But you see how that when it's slow it's really rocking? Yeah. That's called resonance. But we don't really like to see this kind of no. behavior. It's too... It's <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to young women who are considering entering the world of engineering? Um, I wanted to do something with my life where I could help people and this was a way that I could use engineering to help people because that's really the goal of earthquake engineering is to reduce the amount of damage and lost lives in future earthquakes so it was you know some people do become a doctor to help people well I became an engineer to help people thank you so so much this right. has been so great and I'm it's a pleasure to meet you yeah, it's been a pleasure <laughs> talking to you can I have a hug sure <laughs> thank you <laughs>